Electricity is one of nature's greatest forces, and by the middle of the 20th century, we had harnessed it to light and power our modern world. Electricity is all around us, from the signals that control the human heart to the power that drives our mobile devices, methods of transport and beyond. Engineers and technicians across Sussex have made a significant contribution to its development and continue to do so through creative, innovative and sustainable applications of the technology. In this video, we explore the rich history and exciting future of engineering and technology right here in Sussex. We've come a very long way since Alessandro Volta invented the first electric battery in 1800. During the 19th century and the first half of the 20th century, an army of inventors across the globe experimented with various aspects of electricity. This culminated in a multitude of inventions that form the basis of our technology applications and research today, ranging from Michael Faraday inventing the first electric motor in 1821 to the first nuclear power station coming on stream in 1954. Sussex has played its part in the story of electricity with a rich heritage of inventors, entrepreneurs and organisations pioneering technology research and applications. Brighton has a long association with the electricity supply industry being one of the first towns in the UK to have a continuous supply of electricity. In 1882, Robert Hammond established the Hammond Electric Light Company and opened the Gloucester Road power station in a local iron foundry. Electricity generation was provided by various steam engines driving brush dynamos, powering 16 arc lamps, replacing the cumbersome gas lighting on a two-kilometre circuit around the town centre. By 1886, the system had grown substantially under new ownership by the Brighton Electric Light Company to include 1,000 filament lamps on a 13-kilometre circuit around the town centre. By the end of 1887, the generation was switched from DC to AC at 1.8 kV. The voltage was then reduced to a usable 100-volt customer supply. Magnus Volz, the 19th century Brighton engineer and inventor, pioneered the early use of electricity and telephony. In 1879, he set up the first telephone line in Brighton, and the following year was the first person in the town to light his home by electricity, both of which were among the first in the country. In 1883, he launched his most famous and long-lasting project, the Volks Electric Railway, which was the first electric railway in the UK and the third in the world. It still runs along the Brighton seafront today, making it the oldest electric railway in the world, still in operation. Power was provided by a 50-volt DC generator located under the promenade. The electric car was fitted with a small motor, giving a top speed of 6 miles per hour. Standen is an arts and crafts house located in East Grinstead, Sussex, now owned and run by the National Trust. The father of arts and crafts architecture, Philip Webb, a friend of William Morris, designed the house between 1891 and 1894. Electric light in the home was still a novelty and Standen was one of the first houses to be designed and built with electricity. Originally, electricity was generated from an engine in a shed by the old barn. The drawing room had pendant lights and each was 25 watts. There were also four standard lamps in the drawing room, each rated at 12 watts. The other rooms also utilised several light fittings rather than one central fitting, so light could be evenly spread around the room. Society ladies were concerned at the revealing qualities of electric lamps, so light fittings were covered in fabric, shades or glass. Lighting in the kitchen was simple but practical, as it was helpful to direct light downwards to illuminate the cook's working areas. 
Electric light was a social innovation for those living in the country. It enabled the extension of the day for the upper and middle classes for their activities, as well as reading. Stand and still has its original electric light fittings today. Dame Caroline Hazlitt was born in 1895 in Worth, Sussex, the daughter of an engineer. After leaving school, she joined the Cochrane Boiler Company. There, she acquired training in engineering and from that time became a pioneer for women in the electrical and professional world. Caroline Hazlitt was the first secretary of the Women's Engineering Society and later president. She also became the first director of the Electrical Association for Women, of which she was a joint founder. She was the only woman member of the Council of the British Institute of Management and became a chairman of the British Electrical Development Association, the first time a woman had been appointed to that office. Between 1947 to 1956, she was the only woman member of the British Electricity Authority, a popular appointment in view of the importance of domestic electrical development. She helped the government to improve science education for girls and, by World War II, was well known for advising on engineering and electricity. In recognition of her services, she was made a commander of the Order of the British Empire and, in 1947, was promoted to Dame Commander. The IEE, now the IET, elected her a companion. During World War II, she undertook several missions at the request of the British and United States governments. Dame Caroline Hazlitt will be remembered for opening up the world of engineering to women. Ricardo PLC, an environmental engineering and strategic consulting company in Shoreham, West Sussex, has more than 100 years' history of innovation in engineering and technology. Its emphasis has always been on driving performance and efficiency, from early tank engines to today's focus on sustainable future mobility. In 1915, Harry Ricardo founded the business and received a knighthood for his work on internal combustion engines. His redesign of the Mark V tank engine resulted in significantly reduced emissions and was much more powerful. It was the first British-designed engine to be mass-produced. Many combustion innovations followed. The breadth of Ricardo's expertise has grown and covers all vehicle systems for land, sea and air transport. Since 1919, the global headquarters have been in Shoreham, with nearly 3,000 engineers, scientists and technologists around the world. There is very much a focus on supporting global customers with the trusted independent advice on policy, strategy, engineering and manufacturing that they need to decarbonise the transport and energy sectors. Throughout the late 19th and 20th centuries, the demand for electricity accelerated. Fortunately, advances in electricity generation and distribution kept pace with this insatiable demand. Sussex was at the forefront of this development. From its humble beginnings in Gloucester Road, the Brighton Power Station relocated to Shoreham Harbour, where the new generation techniques, demand for seaborne coal and water for cooling, were readily available. Using vastly improved generation techniques and more efficient power distribution, the facility powered a large part of the southeast of England. In 2000, the coal-fired power station was replaced by a brand new gas-fired facility capable of generating 420 megawatts and powering up to 350,000 homes. This low emissions modern facility is highly efficient, using the latest technology to reuse exhaust gases to power an additional heat recovery steam generator. In combination with renewable power generation, it plays a vital part in ensuring our power generation security, diversity and sustainability. Just 13 kilometres offshore from the Shoreham Power Station lies the Rampion Wind Farm. Commissioned by E.ON in 2018 at a cost of £1.3 billion, the wind farm is now fully operational. 
It consists of 116 wind turbines capable of generating a total of 400 megawatts and powering around 350,000 homes, which is similar capacity to the gas-fired power station at Shoreham. Each turbine generates power using the same principle developed by Michael Faraday in the 1830s of moving coils through a magnetic field with each turn of the blades, capable of generating enough power for the average size home for a day. The turbines connect to an offshore substation at 33 kV via 140 kilometers of cable buried beneath the seabed. The offshore substation then transports the power to shore where it connects to the national grid at 400 kV. Wind power is playing a central role in the UK's energy revolution, generating 25% of the UK's electricity needs in 2020. It forms a vital part of the UK's commitment to become carbon neutral by 2050. It is estimated that Rampion avoids 600,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide escaping into the atmosphere each year. Future expansion of Rampion will be a major contributor to the UK's target of wind power, powering each and every home by the end of the decade. Sussex continues to be a pioneer and innovator in the field of electricity and sustainability. Sussex is served by three universities, the University of Brighton, the University of Sussex and the University of Chichester. All provide undergraduate and postgraduate engineering degrees. From small beginnings in 1850, the University of Brighton has grown to a complex and diverse institution based in two locations across the south coast of England. The University of Sussex is a leading research-intensive university, whilst the University of Chichester can trace its origins back to 1839. Numerous further education colleges are dispersed across Sussex too, that provide higher education and apprenticeship training opportunities. Whatever you want to achieve, these colleges are there to support you on your journey to success. They offer technical and professional courses for young people and adults in a wide variety of subject areas. Science, technology, engineering and mathematics are commonly known as STEM is very active in Sussex. Sussex STEM works in partnership with employers and schools in support of the STEM talent pipeline across the South East. The reach and impact of Sussex STEM has grown significantly over the years. In 2017 and 18, over 63,000 students from schools across the South East and around 200 companies engaged with Sussex STEM activities, schemes, events and competitions. The IET celebrated its 150th anniversary in 2021 and its Sussex network joined in this monumental milestone. Although the world has changed significantly, one thing that hasn't, it's the incredible impact engineers continue to have by solving challenges facing communities across the globe. Engineers throughout the ages have been improving our world, from innovators and forward thinkers to influencers and visionaries of the future. Engineers bring ideas to life, turn dreams into reality and make solutions to big challenges. One of the world's oldest professional engineering institution can trace its history back to the formation of the Society of Telegraph Engineers, which held its first meeting in May 1871. By the end of 1871, the Society of Telegraph Engineers had 110 members, and in 1889, the Society became the Institution of Electrical Engineers. And in 2006, they merged with the Institution of Incorporated Engineers to become the Institution of Engineering and Technology. Today, the IET spans a broad set of disciplines, but still maintains its goal of knowledge sharing. Its members continue to lead the discovery and advancement of almost every aspect of our daily lives, both big and small. Throughout the last 150 years, people and organisations in Sussex have played a significant contribution in the history of the IET, and this video highlights many examples. <music> 